Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B, S-O-C.com, on the interwebs. Just got back from a nice morning of trail running. Had some chocolate for breakfast, very nutritious. Drinking some coffee. Working on show notes for an upcoming edition of Stating the Obvious, which is going to be pretty fucking amazing. I said that in the last episode of the cast, but I'm going to say it again. It's going to be pretty fucking amazing, even if I do say so myself. As sitting here working on the notes, it occurred to me I could whoop out an anarchy moment about something I've been meaning to talk about. Because whenever you start having a discussion with a small child, otherwise known as a statist, there's always, but who's going to build the roads? But who's going to, where are the police going to come from? Who's going to pay for college? Right, you hear all these same fucking questions about where are things going to come from? How are they going to work without a government? Because it's just, it's impossible for anybody to do anything without a government. So I'm going to throw out some thoughts on how this would work. And as part of explaining how the police and colleges are what I'm specifically going to talk about. And in the process of explaining how police forces and colleges could work in an anarcho-capitalist society, because of, the, of course there would be no one to force them to operate this way because there is no central planner, there is no government, there is no monopoly on force in an anarcho-capitalist society. So certainly nobody has to use these models. All I'm saying is these are models that would work. And these are models that are going to illustrate the flaws in the system now. So, with the police. First of all, I've talked about it already on this podcast, the people who are making the cell phone app that you sign up and you know, if you get in trouble, whatever you need, quote unquote, police forces, you hit the button on your cell phone and everybody around you who is also subscribed to this app comes to aid you and assist you. Of course, the statist will say that that's impossible for that to happen because people aren't going to do that or, you know, these people aren't trained and there'll be this whole litany of excuses as to... You know, for example, if let's say you're a woman and you're being raped in a back alley, the idea that you could grab your cell phone and hit a panic button and three or four people nearby could run over and help you, that's just not possible because in the statist world view, the way this should play out is that as the woman getting raped, you should get raped and then go to the police and after the fact, the police should protect the rapist from any repercussions such as being shot and killed by the woman. Because, of course, the woman can't do that anyway because she doesn't have a gun because she's a gun control wacko. And I've talked ad nauseum about how the purpose of the police force and, of course, the criminal justice system and the prison industrial complex and all that other stuff, that the entire purpose of those things are to perpetuate crime, right? The reason we have the police and the courts and the judges and the prisons, those exist to protect the criminals from the people they victimize. Because in an anarcho-capitalist society, if you raped a woman, the woman would just kill you. In fact, she'd probably kill you before you were able to rape her because in an anarcho-capitalist society, women would be taught to defend themselves instead of being taught to be victims and being taught that if a guy tries to rape you, like the one college said on their website, you should just either vomit or pee on yourself and hope that that deters him and makes him run away. Right, so in a state of society, it's all based on teaching not just women, but everybody, to be victims. That's why victimhood is considered such a wonderful and elite status in the United States right now, and everybody wants to be a victim. Everybody wants to be a fucking victim. Because victimhood is how you get power. So how could an actual paid police force work in an anarcho-capitalist society? Somebody would start a police force business 
and so say they're going to police force a city. Like I'm here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins in Colorado. By the way, I started listening on audiobooks. I started listening to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. I got through the first disc and into the second disc. I just had to stop because it was just nothing but statism. And I realize it's a science fiction classic. And perhaps I'll go back and try again. But the whole thing is about these people trying to save the empire from collapsing. Because if we don't save the empire, it's going to collapse and there'll be all this anarchy. You know, it's like, oh God, anarchy. Used in the wrong fucking context again. And so we're going to write an encyclopedia with all the information in it so that we don't fall into the dark ages and we can bring the empire back after it collapses. I mean, it's like, ah, Jesus fucking Christ. It's a bunch of fucking tools working their asses off and devoting their life to perpetuating the state. Ugh. Ugh. Ah, so anyhow, fortunately, I had another book queued up on my iPod as I was out running. So I started Hunger Games, the first book. Now, I've already seen the Hunger Games movie, so I somewhat know what's going to happen in so much, of course, as the movie ever follows the book, and we know it usually doesn't. Now, of course, Hunger Games is about statism, which, again, this is another one. I talked about this ad nauseum with the TV series Spartacus, how people watch this and they see Spartacus the slave revolting against the empire and they cheer for Spartacus. But then in their day-to-day life, what do they do? They suck Obama's cock and they support the empire. And, of course, Hunger Games is exactly the same. It's in which, oh, God, <laughs> I can just... Oh, I could spin this off into talking about how statists, they want. I mean, one of the reasons things like Hunger Games I think is so popular isn't because people see this and they identify with the character rebelling against the state. They see this and they want that statist society that's in there. So in the Hunger Games, I only got through the first disc. You know, she's talking about how people die of starvation in District 12, and she never rode in a car before, and they only have electricity for two hours a day. The simple fact is, most of the statists I know would love to live in that society. They'd love to live in a place where the government just had total control, and everybody lived in poverty and was therefore equal. I mean, this this is... I think this is why things like Hunger Games are so popular. Not because people are identifying with the idea of rebelling against the state, because they're not. These things are popular because the 99% have this fucking wet dream of living in a totally status society where everything they do is dominated by the government. They want the world of Brave New World. They want the world of Hunger Games. They want cradle to grave provided for them by the government. They want to be told what to do, where to do it, how to do it, why to do it. This has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. But is related to the upcoming edition of Stating the Obvious, which is going to be fucking amazing. Police Force anarcho-capitalist society. So you start a police force business. So the first thing you'd have to do is get some crime statistics. So figure out, say here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins. So the police force would have to get some statistics on how much crime is going on, talk to people, yada, yada, yada. And then you would go to the people and you would say, okay, look, you pay us, we will protect you. We will reduce the amount of crime. And we're not talking about crime like throwing cardboard boxes in the trash, which for those of you not in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, it is a crime to throw cardboard in the trash. It's also a crime to smoke a cigarette within 20 feet of a doorway. 
We have a lot of crimes. I'm not talking about those kind of crimes. I'm talking about real crime. Murder, rape, theft, child molesting. Talking about things that violate the non-aggression principle and property rights. End of discussion. If it doesn't fall in with those, it's not a crime. So you get the crime statistics. And then here's the deal. If the police don't aren't sufficiently effective that the crime rate goes down, they don't get paid. Because think about it. Right now, the police, wherever you are, you have a police force there. If the crime rate goes up, does the police force still get paid? Of course they do. Not only do they still get paid, but if the crime rate goes up, they actually get more money because they'll say, well, look, the crime rate is going up. We need another SWAT team. We need more grenades. We need more shotguns. We need newer police cars. We need more surveillance cameras. As the crime rate goes up, not only do the police forces continue to get paid, they actually get more money. Just as I've talked about before, the police have no incentive to reduce crime because without criminals, they don't have a job, right? The police have, in our state of society, have no incentive to reduce crime because if they reduce crime, they're not going to get as much money. As long as the crime rate keeps going up, they will get more money because they will be able to say, we need more things to prevent crime. We need more police officers. We need more guns. We need more cars. We need more cameras. We need more laws. It's just the opposite of a business. If you build websites for somebody and you say, and all right, so you make a deal with a client, they're going to pay you $500 to make a website for them. If you don't make the website, you don't get paid. But if we use the statist model, they would say, okay, I'm going to pay you $500 to make a website. And then you would go back to them and say, oh, I didn't make you a website. So now not only do you owe me the $500, but I need another $200 because I haven't made the website yet. And so now I'm going to have to ex work extra on the weekend in order to make it. For police forces, there's no incentive, no incentive at all to reduce crime. None. Crime is their job security. You know, we all know the joke, oh, well, uh, you got job security. You know, it's like, yeah, I got to redo everything. They say, well, at least you got job security. <laughs> Fucking morons. I used to hear that shit all the time when I worked at CSU, when I'd have to be cleaning up somebody's mess. Something, you know, some incompetent government employee fucked up, and I'd have to fucking clean it up for them. And some idiot would always mouth, Well, at least you got job security. <laughs> fucking deadweight piece of shit. Shut up. So the police have job security under a status system. More crime means they get more money and more police officers. If the police only received money when they delivered what they promised, which is a reduction in crime, then there would be an incentive for them to actually reduce crime. If you pay somebody to put a new roof on your house, if they don't put a new roof on the house, you don't pay them. If you pay somebody to paint your kitchen, they don't paint the kitchen, you don't pay them. If you pay Amazon.com to deliver a book to your doorstep and the book never shows up, you don't pay them. But the police, why they're promising to reduce crime, crime goes up, you pay them anyway. Colleges, if you haven't guessed this already, would work along exactly the same model. Right now, here's how it works. You take out a student loan or your parents pay for it or whatever, you go to the college, you give them a bunch of money, you leave, 
And what happens to you after that doesn't fucking matter. You have to pay back the loan. Yet, the colleges are telling you that the education you're getting has value. Now, I know they're lying. You, if you're an NCAP, you know they're lying. And, you know, I've talked about this ad nauseum in the past. Here in People's Republic of Fort Collins, go in a restaurant, talk to your waitress or waiter, find out what they have a college degree in. Most of them do. And they're working in restaurants because their degrees are worthless. Buy Aaron Clary's book, Worthless. Go to Amazon. Amazon.com. Search for Worthless by Aaron Clary. Tell him that the great one himself sent you. All right. Anarcho-capitalist version of college. You go to college, and after you graduate, you don't have to pay for the college unless you actually get a job in the field you majored in. And then you pay the college a percentage of your salary. Now, why do we do it this way? Well, first of all, you pay the college a percentage of your salary because that means the college will get paid back faster. And of course, there could also be a system where you just pay for the college yourself. I have no problem with that. But I'm talking about for people who can't afford college. Which, and of course, also in a non state system, college would not be this expensive. As we all know, as college loans have, well, those of us who can read statistics, as college, as the amount of college loans handed out has gone up, the cost of college has gone up. Imagine that. There's a correlation there. What the fuck? So you don't have money for college, or you need a loan. So you get the loan from the college. You go there, you take your classes, you get your degree, you go out, bang. The college is going to get paid back a percentage of your salary. That means their rate of making money, the college's rate of making money, is tied to you making money. This means they have an incentive to help make sure you get a good paying job. And how they manifest that incentive, of course, would be up to individual colleges. But they might help you find a job. They might send somebody with you to negotiate salaries. Who knows? Again, when the amount of money they make is directly dependent upon the amount of money you make, they're going to have a fucking incentive to make sure you make more money. Now, the other thing, it's critical that the job you get has to be in your field because that's, this will instantly eliminate all of the worthless college degrees. Right? No college is going to hire and keep on staff all of the teachers necessary to, for example, provide a degree in feminist studies. Why? Because nobody can get a job in feminist studies. Nobody's going to make money doing feminist studies. Therefore, the college would never get paid back for somebody who got a degree in feminist studies. Therefore, feminist studies, hyphenated studies, you know, international it was international relationships, uh, communications, human resources, journalism, all of these degrees that are there only for the retarded people that can't do math, they'd all die because nobody with these degrees will ever make any money and therefore none of these people would ever be able to pay for their education and therefore the college would not be able to sustain these degrees. The colleges would have to focus in on educating people in subjects where they can actually get jobs, where they make money. Engineering, science, technology, mathematics, accounting. And all of this is perfectly doable in a free market without state intervention. So when some moron, and you're surrounded by morons if you're an anarcho-capitalist, they are everywhere. They're everywhere around us. And the moron wants to know who's going to build the roads and who's going to provide the police force and who's going to protect you from criminals, you know, as if you're being protected from a criminal now. I mean, so right now, you're, wherever you are, stop. What if, 
right now somebody walked up to you, stuck a gun at you, and said, give me your wallet. Is there a police officer there protecting you? It always fascinates me that these fucking statists live in this bizarro fantasy world while the police are protecting us. No, they're not. The police are at the fucking donut shop. The police are on the fucking internet. On the that fucking cop website where only cops can post. The cops are back at the station playing with their new toys. Right? The cops are looking for shit on Facebook to go arrest people. The cops are not protecting you. The fuck are you smoking? Are you are you fucking retarded? Whenever someone says that to me, I'd like to just fucking pull out an iron pipe, which I don't carry an iron pipe around, unfortunately, and just fucking smash them in the side of the head, and yet, you violate the non-aggression principle, fuck you. This is a statist, it's not a person. As I've said before, since a statist does not respect property rights and doesn't adhere to the non-aggression principle, that means they are not moral agents, therefore killing a statist is no more morally wrong than killing a mosquito. They're both bloodsuckers. But anyhow, I would love to just smash them in the face with an iron pipe and say, okay, so if the police are protecting you, how, how did I just hit you in the head with a fucking pipe? How did that happen if the police are protecting you? Can you fucking show me some empirical evidence that the police are protecting you right now as I beat the shit out of you with this iron pipe? And of course they can't because the police are not protecting anyone. Right? We How many times have I gone down the road? The police show up after the crime has happened and they protect the criminal from any form of retribution. They do not protect victims. The police are there to keep the criminals alive because criminals and victims serve the purpose of the state. When you got somebody with their worthless college degree, why do they have a worthless college degree? Because the worthless degree serves the purpose of the state. The person with the worthless college degree is essentially a victim. They can't get a job, so they got to get on food stamps, welfare. They become dependent on Democrat politicians. They vote Democrat, right? They have this bitterness and hatred. They hate rich people. It fuels the class war between the rich and the poor. It's worth, plus of course it creates all this money. I've talked before about the whole college loan situation. You borrow the money to go to college. The money doesn't really exist. And then if the money doesn't exist, you pay it back. So yada, yada, yada. I know, yada, yada, yada. It's not an argument. I just don't feel like going into it. I've explained it all before, as have other people. The college system as it exists today is there to create people who can work in cubicles without questioning the corporations and the government, of course, but it's also there to create victims. It's what all of these worthless degrees are about. It's a way to create money for the state because the colleges are part of the state. And it's a way to create people who have bitterness and hatred and victimhood. And again, victims serve the state. Criminals and victims serve the state. And my, my brain sputtering out. I just don't know where I even want to go with this. I know, I know. Hold on, coffee. I need coffee. How the hell is it one o'clock already? Christ, I got a lot of shit to do today. Well, I blame Obama. All right. There it is. In an, an, an anarcho-capitalist society, 
you can still have a police force and you can still have colleges. The difference will be that the colleges and the police force will not, or should not, Again, in, in an anarcho-capitalist society, you know, like if you want to have a police force and give them money, even if they don't prevent crime, again, you can do that. You can totally do that. It's the part where you force me to do it that is the problem. So you can totally do that. In an anarcho-capitalist society, if you want to pay $40,000 to get a degree in women's studies, by all fucking means, you should be allowed to do that. But the smart people, smart people would get a college degree and only pay for it if they benefit from it. If the college delivers something that is actually useful and lives up to the expectations of providing an education that will allow you to get a good paying job. Smart people will only pay for a police force if the police force lives up to the expectations of reducing the amount of crime in a given geographical region. Because in an anarcho-capitalist society, smart people will have some fucking standards and they'll have some intelligence, unlike the 99 percenters.